Welcome to Creative Less Podcast, where three creators that are creative less have one guest every week in the space of uh, YouTube content creators, filmmakers, photographers, and uh, the guest is a surprise for the other two hosts. So one host is bringing a guest, the other two hosts don't know who the guest is, and we are having a conversation. <laughs> This guest, <laughs> this episode, <laughs> is not from Canada. Yeah. Okay. This is mm-hmm. this is a huge change for the podcast. Not a guest from Canada in- to begin with. It's an international star. Not only not mm. from Canada, but finally I brought a guy who's from Europe like me. Because Damn. in every episode I see Canada, Canada, Canada. You're tired. We had USA on the previous one, yeah. right? So Europe is coming. And it's coming very yeah. hot, ladies We're and gentlemen. Worldwide because now. We have a guest today that in the past a year and a half, he said to himself, wait a minute, let's take YouTube seriously. And the Europeans, when we get the YouTube seriously, we can reach out to half a million subscribers. And not only that, uh, for people who didn't see what was going on before we start recording the episode, you know, you remember Chris and Asif that you were flexing with our hands, right? <laughs> Yeah. This yeah, this guy has a hand that it's Chris, Tassifs, and mine combined together. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Peter Lindgren. Peter Lindgren. I knew <gasps> Lindgren. Yeah. Hey. Hey. How's it going? Oh, look at that. All What's dressed up, up too. Wow. Okay. Are you shooting and, rivals and right now? <laughs> uh can't say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so as you can see, we have the 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 the, the whole Rocky Balboa right here in uh, SWAT. Peter, what's up, man? What 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 is what How's are things going? in Sweden? What are you preparing like that? I uh, like okay. First of all, I just want to say sorry that I'm late. Um, very sorry that I dragged out your time. But thing was, I I we were shooting videos here uh, at the studio until I think it was like. 2 2 a.m. in the morning. Wow. <laughs> wow. Ooh. You're dedicated. And then You're I dedicated. got home and then I got like two hours of sleep because Alex is sick and then up and then we are shooting today again. So I got like wrong with <laughs> one hour. Peter, hours. first of all, thank you. Thank you because finally I have a person here in the podcast that can understand me because with these fluffies that you see, they're sleeping from <laughs> 9 p.m. and 10 p.m. And I'm telling them you can't sleep so early. Like... In yeah. Europe, we don't no. do that. <laughs> no, man. Peter, c- like, Peter, do you have kids? Yeah, he has one. Oh, yeah, I have one, one kid. Yeah. one kid. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, I mean... You, are you still staying up late or now? Is your schedule changed now? Be honest. Uh, Be honest. So, my, my schedule is that every morning, I try to drop off Alexander at preschool. Um, so, I try to, like work somewhere between like nine in the morning to like 6 p.m and then i go home it's like half an hour drive and then i cook some food and then go to sleep and then back at it again try not Mm -hmm. to work at home though so that's good yeah so so for those for those who haven't understand yet I don't think there are going to be many, but for those who haven't understand who we have in the podcast right now, and they're wo- not watching on the video version of the podcast, because by the way, you can go into youtube.com and go to Creative List Podcast to see the video version of this podcast. Peter, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I, yeah, I don't know which to start. For those of you that haven't seen me or uh, heard me before, I am a dude from Sweden. And uh, I started doing photography and videography. I think it was around like 2014, 2015 now. So it's been like six, six years in the making. And um, in 2018, I kind of decided that I wanted to start my own YouTube channel and become better at photography and videography. And I, as everyone else, got really inspired by likes of Casey Neistat, Peter McKinnon, Matty Apoya, and... Uh, then I just uh, continued making videos and started doing a little bit of freelance work as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. after that, it was uh, very, very tough years on the DHL up until like the beginning of 2019. 
um, where I like decided to quit my job and do the freelance thing full time. And uh, after that, it was kind of a kind of a wild ride all of 2019. And uh, yeah, I got this uh, really, really like good luck by being in the right place at the right time, catching on a trend, you know, doing doing all the right things at at the same time, I guess. And mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. some of you might have not seen it. Some of you might have seen the poker B roll. The B rolls, yeah. Kind of like yeah. what started the entire thing, uh, I guess. So now I'm working as a YouTuber or content creator influencer. I don't know what you want. To call it, <laughs> all of the above. Yeah. All of, all of the yeah. above. And yeah. uh, I'm having yeah. a blast. It's I'm so grateful to be able to do what I do. And uh, yeah, I mean, like I saw that uh, Chris Brockers, right? Chris Brockers uh, and me? Tassif Hussein, yes. Yeah. I, I, I watched your reviews. I think it was like four years back, like on Sony camera or something, three or four years. And I was like, yeah, this dude knows what's up. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, Chris is their go-to for Sony stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Totally. It was mine too. Try my best. <laughs> Peter, I got to say, awesome. you said you said earlier you had a lot of luck. I remember watching you, I think, year before last, literally posting a video like pretty much every day. There was yeah. no luck involved. That was pure hard work. I literally Dedication. remember looking at it going, I have no clue how he's doing that. I, I couldn't do it. So it's not luck. Like there's a lot of hard work involved there too. 100%. Hats and off to you. Peter, 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 what's the phrase that you say when we have fire forge the iron? How, how was the phrase? Uh, yeah. W w you get a forge while the iron is hot. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and that's exactly what you did, man. And it's you know, true. usually a lot of people might say, this guy, for example, he got the cinematic B roll, something that I called in, uh, in a recent video of mine, <laughs> the C roll, right? But they. <laughs> They can understand that it's exactly what you said. You were in a good trend, but man, you were keep creating videos and videos after videos. And this is something that someone who hasn't done it before cannot understand what it means. First of all, to think of an idea, to create the video, to make mistakes, because Peter, guys, please understand English is not our native language, right? And when English is not our native language, mm -hmm. even, uh, you know, I remember myself when I'm doing tutorials and I'm doing mistakes on a tutorial, right? Like, and you go to file, uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so <laughs> imagine doing a review or 10 minutes, 15 minutes of videos or a vlog style, like for vlog style videos, in English, man, I'm I'm admiring you so much for that. Yeah, dude. I think it's, even yeah. doing your videos, I see him like struggling, but like he makes it, like you make it into something fun, right? And it's like the audience is having fun with you. So I think that's really like brilliant how you did that. And speaking Thank of you. that, speaking of that, how is it to speak in a not your native language, right? The experience. <laughs> I think I think right, like nowadays i feel very comfortable speaking english i don't have any issues like switching between swedish and english at all um but there is like when when you want to deliver on camera that is why, where the pressure kind of like comes into play because you want to deliver the line in in a special way or you want to have the point come across that you have in mind and i think that those things are probably the, the hardest because uh you you like I'm thinking in Swedish, but then I want to deliver the line in English. So like, exactly. if I do a dad joke in Swedish, it's like, oh, this is the best <laughs> one ever. And then I try to do it in English, and everyone's like, that, yeah, what? <laughs> it, it's it's the process of translating, right? That you're trying to translate something in English that it doesn't even exist. For yeah. <laughs> for example, but it's it's also one one of the reasons why. I decided to go for um, an English speaking channel because when I started my YouTube channel, I had a like Swedish channel. I did everything in Swedish, but then I realized that I, I'm, I'm going to limit myself if I do it in Swedish and I'm not going to be able to uh, potentially reach a bigger audience. Mm -hmm. So I switched mm -hmm. over to English and also thought to myself like, this is going to be a great opportunity to get better at the language that almost the entire world knows. Mm. Exactly, exactly, mm. yes. And, Peter, and has it been? Have you, have you found yeah. it's, it's really helped you? Excuse me? 
Have you found that it's really kind of helped develop English as a second language for you? Oh, like absolutely. I, I think that when you talk it like every single day, even though you speak like to the camera, you feel more comfortable starting to like get away from, um, you know, kind of the accent that I have. Like if I were to speak like uh, with the good old Swedish accent, then it probably would sound something like this. Mm. <laughs> but the more you should speak you like that. Speak like <laughs> the more you do it, like the the more you get into the more American, I guess, um, kind of English that basically everyone knows when they're watching YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In a way, yeah, Peter, so, I, I agree. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I gotta ask you when you were doing this whole um like this whole rise right like where literally every single day i i would like refresh and i would see like your face pop up on a thumbnail i'm like oh my god another video how's he pushing so many out were you ever going through burnout like like did you ever burn out how were you able to keep going so hard for so long i mean uh i i i know that <laughs> there, there's a bunch of different ways that you can go on being a full-time content creator i did it the wrong way mm. because i was like I, I had like a couple of freelance jobs nothing that would pay my rent if i quit my job but even so i said like i'm not gonna be i'm not gonna be staying at dhl i don't want to have this job because this is toxic that was like the main reason that i wanted to get away from there uh but i didn't have any save money and like when 2019 came the ambition was not youtube but it was to create, to be able to like create a future, create videos, create photos, create something. And uh, I saw it that I didn't have any other option than just <laughs> like pedal to the metal, try my best and see if it works out. But there was this like one, I, I, th I think somewhere around um, October, was it like October, or November, I think it was September, October, or August, September, October in 2019, I literally have no memory of what I did. Mm. Uh, because, because like, it's, it's kind of blank. And in the end of November, everything kind of like crashed down and I started feeling this immense pressure of having to deliver after the poker B-roll because it got so huge yeah. in such a short period of time. And everyone started comparing me towards Peter McKinnon. You know, you have the same yeah. name. And <laughs> Daniel <Sorry. Schiffer. laughs> And uh, Daniel Schiffer, you know, yeah. everyone that was doing yeah. the whole B-roll trend. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I kind of like slid in from like a sideways there because I, I'm not a part of like the whole uh, Canadian gang or U US gang. Or we're gonna make creator. we're gonna make our own dope squad. <laughs> we, they, oh, we, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I totally agree. But uh, and that's the thing, I didn't know anyone that was doing YouTube uh, at all. Mm. Like I didn't know anyone that was doing the same thing. And I was sitting here all alone, trying to come up with everything on my own. And I think it was like at the end of. Uh, December or in the beginning of January when I moved the office, that was when I actually realized that I, this is not possible. Like I can't do this. I have to do something different or I am going to just like throw this in the trash can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. but then I started making a little bit more like vlog style videos, a little bit more videos that, that you enjoyed uh, making uh, yeah. kind of heartfelt yeah. talk, you know, when you sit down and do that. And, uh, that kind of got me back into like making videos because it's fun to make videos. And also I set up all the different affiliate links that I possibly could to make sure that didn't survive solely on AdSense yeah. alone, because that is yeah. horrible. Mm. Espe especially Agreed. yes for us. You know, do you think that the transition that you made to an office it helps with a YouTube channel? For example, a lot of us, Chris, Tassif, and myself were in our houses, right? So do you think the transition of going to a dedicated space just for YouTube helps on the process? On oh, the process. it does. No doubt, like 110%. If you, if you think of it like uh, when you work at home, there's always something that you can do except for work, you know? 
There, there's always going <laughs> to yeah. be like Netflix. There's always going to so be true. something else. You know, maybe it's the family, maybe it's the the dishes. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. But I think of it the same way as I did when I was doing the bodybuilding. If I go to the gym, I'm there for one reason and one reason alone, and that is to work out, lift the weights, and go there, go from the gym and feel relieved that I actually did the work that I needed to be done. So, like w when you have an office space or when you have a studio, I think that it helps you with your creativity because you you feel so free in what you can do, and you don't have the obstacles of being at home, if you may. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. That's a good. Makes point. sense. Yeah, uh, it's it's like I think the best part was then when when I moved from like my, my kitchen table at home. And then started recording videos to, like in the office space that was my very first office space with a buddy of mine. And that helped me to also like go to the office, be productive once I'm there and then go home. Mm. Um, it feels more like a job rather than just something that you do for fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Speaking of office spaces, even though yeah. both both are Speaking fun. Of <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of just office spaces, funds. your new uh, office space. Like like uh, the new uh, floor that you built, dude. That's incredible. You did that all by yourself with your dad's help, right? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's uh, <laughs> yeah. It, it, like that was a way too big of a project. Yeah. I, I I literally was here, and then I was looking out, and I'm like, yeah, you know, this is gonna be finished in three yeah. weeks. And then I was like, yeah, maybe like five. <laughs> I was like. Five weeks passed, and I'm like, yeah, maybe like, maybe like eight. Yeah, yeah. What are you plans with that? Like, what are you gonna do with going uh, two floors? Like, have you planned it out? We are uh, going to shoot more uh, stuff outside in the uh, outside in that studio, and it's also gonna be um, more of a um, how do you say like streamlining streamlining the workflow because right now, whenever you want to shoot B-roll of a product, for example, then I have to do it here in the office, mm. and now my colleague edwin and my buddy he can shoot all the b-roll out in the studio okay and then upload it to the nos servers and then i can download it from here start the edit do the talking head and then we can just like work simultaneously to push out even more videos mm. so nice i nice. hope that that is gonna work. nice nice <laughs> <laughs> so so you have a guy that the works with you now uh yeah he's he's working with me part-time so nice it, what he does is that we talk about all the ideas that we have. We, he helps me shoot. Like, I'm acting in the videos, so he's the DOP. And uh, then then we just shoot all the B-roll together uh, whenever, or like I do the talking head, he shoots the B-roll, and then when, when we're outside, he's behind the camera shooting behind the scenes, stuff like that to make things easier so that I don't have to think of all the different things um at the same time as i'm trying to record a youtube video mm. Mm -hmm. Let Edwin know he's, that a, must help he's a great actor too uh, i liked his uh <laughs> appearance <laughs> in rivals <laughs> oh just you wait. oh no rivals 3 is gonna be <laughs> oh, something no. different okay. you see guys that you were you were always saying about the voice right you see that my fellow european friend he's got a good out. voice yeah you see, you see that? Yeah. You see that? <laughs> I, I told you so. <laughs> you know, YouTube journey. One advice that for people who listen right now, you know, like the main advice that you could give for someone that is thinking to create a YouTube channel in 2021, what would be? Have fun. Hmm. And, and that, period, that's, right? That's, there's so it's, much to that that makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. that people don't understand. That's so true. Yeah. It, and I think, like, I listened to a podcast uh, where you were uh, in The Hive with Jared Spink, Chris. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. right? Yeah. Um, yeah. We talked about, like, you you have been doing your YouTube channel for, like, seven or eight years, something like that. Uh, I've had content on it for a very, very long time. It just it wasn't really – I only really started taking it seriously, like, like, three years ago. But, yeah, there's been content yeah. on there for a while. Yeah. 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 And I mean, like, the reason why we start watching YouTube is because it looks mm. fun, right? Mm -hmm. It's like we we watch something, like someone do something fun, and then we want to do it ourselves. 
but then we start making something that we think everyone else wants to see. And once we do that, it starts to become boring because you don't really want to do yeah. that in the first place. 100%. Yeah. So now is actually kind of the first time where I start to feel that I can try stuff out. Like I can try making my short films. I can try having fun with the review. I don't have to do it the same as everyone else is doing. And, you know, do, do stuff different because that is what's going to last the longest. And having fun is not always about who can uh, travel the most or who can, uh, you know, buy the most expensive car or whatever. It, 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 it is like, like right now, I'm sitting here in a SWAT <laughs> SWAT out <outfit. laughs> and this is something that I wanted to do when I was 14 years old. You know, it's like and acting. Now you can, yeah, and and now yeah. I can, and I think that making that cool, like in a way, with YouTube is also gonna help like younger people to also have fun with the whole making videos because that's what it's all mm. about, basically. Mm -hmm. That's, that's very, so true. That's, yeah, that's so true. That's so true because a lot of times I think creators, they get in a loophole that they don't understand that they're creating content that they don't like to do anymore. And, you know, Peter, something that uh, always stays on my mind is that usually with the creators, we want to create. But when you're not in a very targeted and specific niche, you don't have a lot of possibilities for your content to be shown mm. to other people, yeah. right? So... For example, me, I started with Final Cut tutorials and I would love to have a transition to different content, but this is the, uh, the sweet spot that you say, how am I going to do it? What am I going to do? So what do you think? Is there still a place for tutorials or gear if used the traditional way, especially when you have, you know, content creators like Gerald and Dan that he's doing all the work, that he's doing a <laughs> gear review and then you say, okay, so yeah, now what am I going to say? Yeah. What's, what's <laughs> the point? Yeah. What's the point? So what do you think about that? Like, do you, for example, Peter McKinnon and Matty Hapoya said that tutorials are dead or are probably dead. Do you agree with that? Uh, I would say both yes and no. In, in, in a sense, I think that Yes, tutorials are dead in the sense of that you are not going to have as much fun making the tutorials over a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. that, that is kind of like, if you watch my poker B-roll, that was a, a huge success. But it's also a tutorial because I show you it. all the steps yeah. of how to shoot a B-roll. And then I did another one. And then I did another one. And then I did another one. And then I started <laughs> to feel like, I don't, I, I don't want to do this mm. anymore. It is boring. I can do it with the flick of a switch and just like do my regular transitions and it's going to look the same. And for me as a creative, it is like starting to become this uh, thing that I have to do rather than something that I want to do. And I think that the same thing goes for tutorials because if, if you are just making the same tutorial, like structured the same way over and over again, you're going to burn out. You're going to burn out. <laughs> yeah, you're going to burn out and then you're going to get bored of it and then you don't, don't want to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side, I think that tutorials in the sense of going out and actually doing your thing and baking things in that video that like creating a tutorial that is some sort of like, I guess you can say vlog tutorials in a way, but not like dragged out. I think if you can watch someone and relate to that person and at the same time learn something from that, maybe like uh, something uh, valuable that the person said or showed you, it doesn't really matter, but something like that, I think is going to survive for a longer period of time. And I think that people want to see other people create stuff that they enjoy rather than just like tutorials over and over because yeah. I... Yeah. I, I don't want to watch tutorials over and over on Peter McKinnon's channel, for example. I want to see what Peter does because I like Peter. Yeah, yeah that's so true. So to, to, uh, to kind of lead from that point then, Peter, what channels do you watch? I'm always interested, like what channels, like kind of outside of our niche, if any. Well, for a long time, I watched basically all of the <laughs> creators that are in our niche. Just uh -huh. because, like, I, uh -huh. 
I wanted to book, like build a channel within that niche. And then the more uh, my own channel grow, the, the less time I actually had to watch content creators. Mm -hmm. And now I would say the, the last two months, I barely watch any YouTube videos at all. Um, Interesting. Mainly, okay. mainly because I don't want to see what other people do and have that affect the way that I create my own content. Because in the beginning um, of, I think it was like 2020, I watched a lot of Casey Neistat's old vlogs. And then I noticed that my content started to become Casey mm. Neistat's videos. Yeah. <laughs> like it's, it's rubbing off on you, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was. And it kind of was subconscious in a way because I, I was like, yeah, you know, I, I'm doing the edits, I'm shooting the top town shots, doing the jump cuts, basically the same, same kind of music. And then I was like, nah, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna stop watching YouTube videos. So now I only like scrub through the thumbnails and then try to like jump into the analytics instead because I don't know, for me, for me, it started to become this, I, I, I always compare myself. I know, I know that you shouldn't yeah. do it, but when, when you watch other people, uh, you feel like, wow, this is very mm -hmm. good. Like this is, this is extremely mm -hmm. good. And then, then you're like, oh, what can I do to make this good videos? Yeah. And then you start to compare yourself and think like, am I good enough? Mm. No? Um, and that's a very hard, like thought yeah. process to have. I don't, it's yeah. not good. I think <laughs> yeah, this is yeah. the, this is the hard, one of the hardest parts of being a YouTuber, because even if you don't want to do that, you will compare yourself yeah. with other creators and you'll say, oh, you'll absolutely. say, am I good enough? Why people don't like my videos? Why they don't comment to my videos? Why my views are not going up? But there is this phrase that they say, eventually, if you're good at it, and this might sound cliche, views are going to come. You know, the algorithm mm -hmm. is going to pick you up. It might be one year, three years, yeah. five years or 10 years, but it's going to happen eventually. And this is the thing that I believe we need to be very patient. And again, with your situation, that wasn't a luck, man. <laughs> because yeah. you said I was, that, that <laughs> wasn't work, a luck. Hard work. Yeah. I got to say, Peter, your like, content... Like you usually Peter, comes to those who work hard. He should do you the intro like a to movie our podcast. Trailer voice. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. No, I was going to say, world. Peter, your your content, <laughs> I've noticed that like you're not afraid to kind of... Uh, like You're very honest with, with what's going on in your life, right? Like I've seen, like even when you mentioned when you changed from... Uh, like when you were doing a lot of B-roll videos. And then I remember you put out a video saying that you were getting tired of that and you want to change the direction of the channel, right? And even before, uh, you you talked a lot about like, you know, it was just like talking head, you get in front of the camera and you mention like what's going on and stuff like that and, you know, burnout and all that stuff. Do you find like um, putting it out there, just making a video, just involving your audience, would that, did that help quite a bit in that process that you were going through, whatever you were going through on your own? Yeah, I, I and I still love those mm. videos. Like th those are my favorite videos yeah. to make. You know, when 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 you just yeah. sit down, I talk what I feel and think about, and then just edit quick video mm. together. You know, actually, a weird thing happened just before we went on the Christmas holiday. I I was here at the office, and then I was like. Oh man, there's a couple of things that I wish I knew before I started my YouTube channel. And then I was like, yeah, that's kind of a good title for a video. You know, I'm, yeah, I'm just gonna rig up the camera, record a video pretty quickly. Yeah. And just I sat do down, rigged up do everything. Uh, literally took me 15 minutes to record that mm. video. And it was seven minutes long edited. And then I uploaded it and that video took off. It was like, I think it has like 120,000 nice. views or something like mm -hmm. that. Nice. <laughs> And it literally was total one and a half hours mm. of work. And mm. it's just me talking about things that I wish that I'd known when I started. And I think that those heartfelt videos where you just like speak yeah. your thoughts yeah. are also um, what, what will connect you to the creator mm -hmm. or like you as the audience, if you watch my videos, then then i i want to be a part of what you're experiencing yeah. and relate to that in a way and if you can explain that to the viewer and make them feel like they are your buddy 
then that 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 is a pretty cool yeah, thing yeah no and i think that's great because you show you're yeah. human right and like people it's therapeutic for you mm-hmm. as well to yeah. kind of just talk about it and then also the audience is like more involved in your journey right yeah i think i think that's great my question follow-up question to that though quickly is when you are putting out videos like that so for example something that i struggle with right like I think some of my videos that do well and like, you know, they have like all B-roll cinematic whatnot or some sort of story plot, like I try to put in a skit or whatnot. And then when I follow up and I want to do a video like that where it's not going to have anything like spicy or anything cool looking, right? And it's just going to be straightforward. I feel like there's just pressure on me like, oh, how do I make my video look more like that? You know, the other video that's doing well or the other video that people are expecting from me, but then all they get is just me turn on the camera and just talk to them. Right. And you know, no, no cool shots or anything like that. Like, how do you deal with that? I don't know. It's, it's a very good, very good question because I, I, I can, I, I've put myself in that situation mm-hmm. so many times that I'm like, mm-hmm. Oh, who who the hell would watch me for ten minutes talk about my life? Like, <laughs> God damn it! it do you um, even think about it now anymore, though, or it's just a case of you just oh, I want to talk about this, and you turn on the camera, or does does like to see thought process? Does that even do you have that same thought process now? Oh, like I'm I'm always having a thought process of what to record and what not to record. Um, so, like, if if. I'm making a video now. It, it's like, okay, yeah, maybe this this has some substance that I can share with my viewers. Um, but yeah, I, I would say that I'm 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 thinking less of what my audience will um, or how they will react now than I did when I had like twenty thousand subscribers. Mm-hmm. You know, because now yeah. I feel like yeah. since there's so many people out there that are like enjoying what I do, then I try to think of, okay, there's people out there that wants to see my stuff rather than is this good enough to put out to the audience? Because if you don't want to follow a creator, you can just unsubscribe, simple as that. But if one person unsubscribes, then it's going to come 10 new ones that enjoy that video a whole lot. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I think that the build out video is a very good example of that, like the studio mm-hmm. build out. I made like a two month project into a 18 minute long video. And it's very much like DIY. Yeah. It's not really filmmaking in any sense. It's like a vlog style video with a bunch of time lapses. <laughs> and I've gained like 1,300 subscribers on that video alone. Mm. Nice. But I probably lost a whole lot as well because there's there's a lot of people that don't like the DIY stuff, but then you also start to find like your mix of people that will come to you and that is kind of like wh- where I'm at when I'm thinking like, okay, is this worth recording? Well, yeah, it is because I'm having fun with this. Mm. So if I'm having fun or if I'm feeling good about this, then I usually put it out to the audience for them to enjoy. That's interesting. It's all your journey. Like everything you're putting out now is literally your journey and you've almost just developed a yeah. license to to be yourself whereas at the yeah. beginning you felt like you had a uh, you had to do something for everyone else now it's like nope now i'm just yeah. me exactly yeah and i i think it's also very easy to fall into the, that trap because people watch um my videos or peter mckinnon's videos or casey's videos and then think that they have to act just like that on camera or they have to do the same thing on camera Mm. or do the same kind of skits or do the same kind of like uh, coffee b-roll i don't know but it's 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 always uh that kind of like thought process that goes through when you start out but what what, like the feeling that i have now compared to 2019 is as you said you know i I'm, i'm i'm just being myself doing what i enjoy and uh hopefully people enjoy it too yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well i think it's obvious they do yeah, yeah. <laughs> thanks any hobbies that you would like to if uh, i have like any to, hobbies to, yeah, yeah yeah like things, be, besides things Zing, that people right? would be surprised to know uh well i love knitting no, I'm just. Uh, I'm, okay, that uh, would have been fantastic. That would have been so oh, cool. That would have been awesome, right? <laughs> that would have been great. That would have been great. Um, well, I, I did have hobbies before I started with YouTube because YouTube takes up so incredibly much time, and 
also when I got a kid, then I realized that I don't have any time mm. at all left to do anything else. Um, to to all the parents out there, are you uh, you guys parents? Yeah, yeah. Me three. no. The guys yes. <laughs> me no. Emilio all has right. all the time in yeah. the world. I know what he, to do. He, he, I know what he to can do. do anything he wants, whenever <laughs> yeah. he wants. And we realize now that like the clock is always ticking. Yep. The, I'm oh, gonna yeah. be. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. gonna be. I, I'm gonna have. How you say? Um, the uncle. I'm gonna be a very good uncle f- from all my friends that they have kids, <laughs> right? I'm gonna see them whenever I want them yeah. to. When Get I the best of both worlds. I'm gonna be <laughs> alone. Then leave. <laughs> then leave. You're basically Bye-bye. living the bachelor Bye-bye. life. See ya. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So like, if you have a kid, then you know. Yeah. Uh, all your time that you thought you had is like just yeah. gone. Um, yeah. so yeah, it, it's like, I wish I had time for hobbies, but unfortunately I don't. It's, it's like, I love playing video games. I never do. I haven't played in, I think four years, mm. um, or three years. Maybe I think like last game that I played was horizon zero dawn. Mm-hmm. Fantastic game, yeah. by the way. Um, yeah. and I also want to buy a PS five, but I know that if I do, I probably will not be able to make YouTube videos in like four weeks mm. <laughs> suck you in <laughs> it's it's like one of those things you love the idea of being yeah. able to play video games but like i'm like you as well like i love playing video games but i sit down to play a game and like i'm wasting i could something be doing else. something right yeah. now and i'm just you feel guilty. wasting time yeah, yeah you yeah. do feel oh, guilty yeah yeah, yeah. Feel yeah. 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 i uh, do you think I bought, uh, like, what 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 am i doing like i i, I, I yeah spent like yeah. four hours <laughs> here right? yeah that's it yeah. well that's it the time just disappears when you play video games as yeah. well so so Whole what does a typical gone. day like uh look like for you peter um typical day okay let me uh try to think of a interesting okay so typical day is like i i wake up at like 6 a.m um try to sleep a little bit longer now with alex being a little bit older um and then i dropping off at preschool or kindergarten, or whatever you call it, uh, first school, mm. as we say in Swedish, um, <laughs> and then drop him off at like eight, and I'm at the office at maybe like, at like um, ten, nine thirty, because I do try to do some gym in between. Nice. So trying to have like nice. thirty or forty-five minutes in the morning, um, and then once I'm here at the office, it's basically like just winging it, talking to Edwin, what we can record. Uh, what kind of videos that we should be doing and if we have any like product releases coming up where we have like an embargo date that we have to think mm-hmm. of and uh, mm-hmm. us- usually it's like a lot of email in the morning and then trying to come up with ideas for the coming week or something mm-hmm. similar and then um, if we are all done with the ideas then we just shoot the videos uh, Edwin shoots some b-roll and I shoot some talking head. And uh, yeah, then usually we don't have any more time because it's like, goes away. bam, yeah. gone. Yeah. So are, are you like batch shooting, <laughs> Peter? Like, or like, do you have dedicated days where you're filming or is it kind of just like whenever you can? No, I I, 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 I am going okay. to do that now in uh, towards the summer since I, like last year, as some of you might know, I dropped like, at least two yeah. to three videos every week and now i want to keep it at two mm-hmm. no more no less That's so smart. Smart. i if i make like three videos one week mm-hmm. may, maybe like one talking head and two really good ones or like a bonus video then i i'm going to save that video to like the yeah. bunch of good videos that i can have yeah. and uh, I'm i'm trying to like schedule for the entire month of like July and some weeks mm-hmm. in August as well, so that I don't have to work. But then, then again, it's going to be like super long days here at the office, uh, like April, m- uh, May, and June. And then hopefully I can be <laughs> taking yeah. some time off in June. Okay, okay, awesome. What, what? It's worth Honestly, it. To, yeah. To do what time that, do you yeah. usually clock out? Like when do you head back home? When do you uh, head back home? try to go back home at like okay. 6 p.m right now it's uh this week is very full Ooh. i have uh actually i have a video coming up uh, coming um tomorrow that is um yeah i can't say anything oh well i can't say 
<laughs> when the, when this is out, those of you listening, yeah. if if it's dropping tomorrow, um, yeah. then um, it, it's going to be on a new product from a, a special company that makes really oh, good drones. Okay, yeah, okay, like yeah. I know uh, there's rumors already. They, yeah, that's tomorrow. It's oh, the is 15th. that tomorrow? Oh, it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you, yeah. That's somebody tomorrow. on YouTube yeah, actually yeah, put it out. Yeah, yeah. the one that's, that's yeah, some somebody not on out yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you see, that someone had an unboxing of it already. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Really? Yeah, someone oh, Best Buy in uh, in the states they had it out for sale, and someone found it at one store and wa wasn't able to buy it, and then someone else was literally <laughs> able to just buy it off the shelf. And you know what's funny? Same thing happened with the FPV as well. Somebody had it on YouTube like like a couple days before mm -hmm. it launched. Yeah, it's weird. Damn. I mean, like, I something that I don't like about that is like being being a mm. part of the embargo date. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it's like being a part of a fleet of creators that are dropping yeah. the same kind of video on the same day on the same time. Yeah, and then you're like, oh. yeah. So, you so for your embargo with with them, do you have to release it at a certain time, or could you delay yours by like two hours and just put it out after everyone else? Yeah, you can release whenever yeah. you want yeah. after yeah. the embargo yeah. lifts. Uh, but then again, it's it's all about you know, like for those of you that are making money off your YouTube channel, it's a mm -hmm. lot about like getting the views uh, yeah. off the product. Yeah. So if, if you were to release uh, a, a new product after the embargo date, like one day after, that is probably not going to do as well mm. in the algorithm as if you release it like at the same day as the product yeah. is released. So it's like a double-edged yeah. sword. You got you to gotta do it, but Constant you also don't want it. <laughs> it's like you screwed both ways. <laughs> 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 I mean, I mean, you, yeah, it's it's so weird because I, I don't take it that yeah, like, I'm complaining yeah. about it. I'm super grateful mm -hmm, to mm -hmm, be yeah, a part yeah. of this, like extremely grateful. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also like I know the feeling when you get bombarded with notifications yeah. on the same date. And that is what I don't like. But um, mm -hmm. I'm trying something different in this video that I hope that people appreciate, will yeah. uh, appreciate. And uh appreciate it's it's yeah it's it's not gonna be like the regular like straight to unboxing mm -hmm. sit down talk about the specs only thing that you do it's gonna be a little bit of uh, different elements okay okay nice nice yeah look forward to it okay question for you yeah, and you gotta answer quickly okay you're allowed two cameras and two lenses that's it what do you choose <laughs> a7s3 a7s3 16 third five 85 millimeter okay. that is oh. no 20 24 millimeter G. oh yeah that, that's Sorry. your bread and butter lens okay okay yeah <laughs> yeah yeah 24 or 24 70 a, a great <sighs> how about you guys okay a uh, damn sure. no nobody's asked Chris. me before go Chris, Chris. you go <laughs> uh a a7s3 and uh sigma 24 to 70 and uh, probably a7s3 and a prime probably the 24 gm i can get everything anybody. i'm curious i'm curious why you guys are not saying the That's fx3 like, uh, have you used the fx3 Go. peter okay see, see okay. Yeah. but you still prefer the a7s3 oh, yeah i uh, i had it and made a video yeah, yeah man I, I like the fx3 is the a7s3 mm -hmm in a different body like yeah. it's the mm -hmm. exact same camera literally yeah um so for me it's like the only thing that i want in that camera is the tally lights mm. because i really like them useful um, yeah. but other than that i think the a7s3 has a better like overall package with the grip and everything okay. else um so have yeah. you tried the uh have you tried the fx6 uh i have not I'm oh, you've got to get your hands <laughs> on to try it. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. can I, can I, yeah, can I go, go now go. for my two cameras? Go, yeah, yeah, you yeah. go, go, you go, okay, Emilio, and then I'll we'll go. go back. FX, FX9 2470 Z Master. Oh, he's. A7S3 with the 35 millimeter. Simple guy. That's simple guy. One? You know, just one, yeah, one huge cinema yeah. camera yeah, yeah, worth yeah, several Simple guy, easy to please. Just like 20 G's worth of stuff. Like, why not? <laughs> we said yeah, if we go. could, right, in our dreams. Like, why not go with that? In that case, just Ari Alexa. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? I would like to retract IMAX mine. Camera, I want an IMAX go. camera. <laughs> yeah, I would probably just yeah. do FX3. Okay, um, 
Sorry? Right? Venice Which camera? camera? <laughs> we, camera? We're going back. Oh, like, Venice. I want to have yeah, the Sony yeah. Venice. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yeah. yeah, no, I'd go yeah. FX3, uh, Sigma 24 to 70, and then um, probably do the A1, and then with the A1, probably 24 millimeter. That would probably mm -hmm. be the way I'd go. If you, mm -hmm. Yeah, for the photos, yeah. For the if photos, you asked right? me just Versus, literally like yeah. two weeks ago, I would have said all Canon cameras, so... I don't know. I'm still I'm still on the fence, but let's see. <laughs> How the situation with COVID right now? Uh, we can't travel, right? So after this whole situation ends, do you have any plans for which countries or which cities that you would like to visit? Oh man, there's so many places. Besides Greece, because you're coming to Greece. <laughs> oh, dude. dude, I love Greece. Like. <laughs> <laughs> me me and my fiance we've been to Greece ever since like every year since 2014. Oh, wow. wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, and oh, wow. It, it's one of the best countries in the world, especially like the food, the beaches, the islands, you know, it's ah, <laughs> oh, I love it. Um <laughs> but if if I were to choose right now, I'd probably go like if if I could travel anywhere in the world right now, I'd probably go on a 2 week a trip together with my fiance and my kid to somewhere like mm. uh, the Maldives or something similar. It would be good so choice. good to just have a break in a place like that and just disconnect. Uh, yeah. Sweet, sweet, so yeah. Just sweet, so reset. You know, yeah. Yeah. Close yeah. everything and be relaxed. That would be amazing. Uh, but if I do have any plans, yeah, I, I, I have been talking a little bit to, uh, Teppo Hapoya about coming yeah. over to Canada because he's moved there to uh, work with Maddie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. I also have pitched an idea to Peter McKinnon to join in on mm. future nice. rivals installment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I haven't gotten an answer on that, nice. but nice. Nice. it would be cool though. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I've been talking to Gerald Undone as well. He wants to uh, come over here and check out the studio, do a Studio Undone tour. Um, so th there is some plans, but um, yeah, hopefully that's going to be like maybe at the end of this year or in the beginning of next. Yeah, when the yeah. COVID situation allows us. Because I was telling yeah. you guys as well here in Europe, we are very strict. The restrictions are very strict. And, and Yeah, I mean, yeah, probably in Europe, but Sweden, Sweden is Sweden. So I would say like <laughs> Sweden has the worst... Uh, spread of the virus right now and wow. sweden wow don't have any like rules uh against oh, no. not mm -hmm. using masks so like we, we are allowed basically to go on restaurants we are allowed to go into shopping malls we are allowed to go really wherever we want basically and uh, there's no restrictions in place and uh yeah people don't care that's, people oh, don't wow. give a shit unfortunately wow but that's how it is huh you know that's, know that's that's very, very interesting. Yeah, that's very interesting because we see that in different countries and also in different cities all over the world, they they handle and they very face yeah. the COVID situation very differently. Like, yeah. man, man, yeah. I don't know. You know, we weren't expecting that, right? Like, I believe no, no. one was expecting how the world is going to transfer. Yeah, to how it transferred. <laughs> Peter, I have one <laughs> request you. for you. <laughs> nah, I'm just, I have I'm one just, request just, for you. I'm just, if you do do rivals down here in Toronto, uh, yeah. you got to take us three as extras on the set, man. I, I think we got some uh, pre pretty good actors here. <laughs> oh, for sure. First of all, first of all, yeah. if he's gonna come to uh, to Toronto, Tasif, we're okay. gonna travel on go. the same plane. Me, and Peter. yeah, yeah. You guys <laughs> gonna come from hunters. Europe, bro? You'll come, you come down here. <laughs> Me and Chris will be waiting for you. <laughs> We're gonna destroy you all. <laughs> I got, I got my bike as well. <laughs> like, okay, I, I, I can give you, I can give you some, uh, some hints on Rivals Three. Ho um, there will be a mm. uh, another creator joining in on this. Um, nice. That is from the UK. That is uh, oh. also very good at shooting B rolls. The James oh, Matthews, the inventor, oh. the inventor of the B rolls. <laughs> Don't say names. Well, don't he, say he's not names. revealing it, so it's yeah. all Give good. Give the suspense. Just, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Give the suspense. Yeah. The suspense to James, the audience. James, James Matthews. Ah, James sick. Matthews. He's going to be in on it. Um, 
Okay. And, uh, okay. He's come to are, Sweden. He's come to Sweden. No, unfortunately not. Okay. But we have a solution for it. So we we've been okay. writing this. Uh, we're talking about this installment for well over three months, I think three wow. or four months. Wow. Okay. Okay. Um, and uh, to give you a little bit of a hint, we are going to tie up the poker B roll, the office B roll, mm. the Campari B roll after oh, math wow. into rivals. This is going to be huge. Mm. Okay. Small. Okay. So we are creating a big video. The RCU, <laughs> That's the Rival sick. Cinematic Universe. That's such a good name for it. <laughs> Now uh, I, w- I want a little bit to talk about the nice logo that I see there. Ah, the <laughs> that logo. one, yeah. Is the, the, the oh, logo, one. yeah, yeah, this yeah. One. Is this hey, gonna be a new brand? Hey. I'm buying now. I'm buying now. I'm buying now. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is gonna be for the character that I'm portraying right now. It's actually, in, I don't know if this is gonna be in Rivals, but um, okay. we'll see. Okay. We'll see. Awesome, awesome. And also, Peter, if we uh, end up coming to Sweden, uh, can we uh, stay uh, up in the attic, like the new area that you've uh, built? <laughs> we'll bring our sleeping bags. <laughs> <laughs> you you want to know the best part? Literally, where my studio's at, there is a four-star oh. hotel, like 50 Done. meters away. Amazing, <laughs> oh, amazing. Yeah, wow. From amazing. the studio. It's by a lake, Ooh. and it has a spa. Like er, er, everything is very yeah. good, like super good food. To drop an idea, so to drop an idea, we should organize something after the COVID ends. You know, because we were talking with guys to to the with the guys to create it in uh, New York or Toronto, Canada. We should organize something like a meetup, like the Sony Camera Camp in Europe as well. What do you <laughs> say, Peter? Mm, like a big to, to Absolutely, find, I can to talk find, to Sony and they're they're down. They're yeah, down. You probably have the in. To bring everything oh, yeah. in Europe, right? Uh, it, honestly, if you tell us <laughs> yeah. right now, Rivals 4, you're going to cast us, we're booking our tickets right now. Four-star hotel. <laughs> tickets right now. Four-star hotel. <laughs> I, okay. You got to see Rivals 3 first okay. because it might be a flop. You know what I really like, though, Peter? You know that video that you did in um, where you're doing the blacksmith one, the, the latest one? Dude, that one was so well done. Like, oh, I was yeah. blown away by yeah. that one. Yeah. 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 Thank the you. The sound on that, too. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, we like th- what I wanted to achieve with that was um, that I didn't feel that I gave him justice with the first one because it, like the blacksmith thing looked cool, like the mm-hmm. ba- blacksmith B roll looked very cool, but it wasn't like true to the craft, if you may. And um, he was super kind to like be an acting actor in the b-roll video but now i said to him like i i really want to show out the emotion and you creating the knife and the entire set felt very yeah. like old and there's like old family yeah stuff you know so 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 i wanted to have that in that video and make it feel more emotional yeah. and more mm. cinematic yeah yeah no Real it, was good. Cinematic. it was really well done yeah that's great, that's great. <laughs> b-roll okay. should we do it should we do a quick fire chris b-roll. you want to do a quick fire <laughs> <laughs> we, ha- quick we have quick fire do we have any questions left what do we have let's have a look all right all right um all right so we're gonna do some quick fire you gotta answer quick like whatever comes right to your mind right. um no, Wait, no, we've done all no, these. we haven't we've done, done the second no 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 we, we haven't done one and i want you to ask to ask him this one as a European, again, I'm saying that. I want oh, you okay, to ask okay. you I that. think I know which one is. Okay, okay. So, pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Oh. Yes. I don't... Whoa. Yes. Oh, there we go. Oh. There we go. No, 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 no. no. That's, That's it. End it. End the podcast. Just cut <laughs> Thank it. Thank you for watching. Thank you so much. <laughs> see, you, see you next <laughs> week. Take care. <laughs> okay, what movies or TV shows do you watch? Okay, okay. So, you do... You... Um, <laughs> movies or shows, like... like Favorite movie, movie right, right now, now uh, I, I would, would say Avengers Infinity, Infinity War because of Thanos. We love him. <laughs> um, shows, don't, don't really have, have time for it. So, okay. yeah, Avengers, Avengers Infinity, Infinity War. Favorite movie of all Ooh, time. That's a tough one. You know, uh, something that might sound cliche, but I want the audience to understand that when I'm saying that, 
on the guests that we have on the podcast is really honest and true is the thing that we could continue yeah. this conversation for hours and hours. And I'm sure that when we have the chance to meet up in person, we are going to continue this kind of conversation, you know, with no cameras, no audios and uh, all this crazy stuff. But I want to thank you so much for being here and uh, dedicated your time, you know, dressed mm -hmm. during thank the you. suit, with as we can say, for being here. Also, I, I, <laughs> yes, thank of you. Course, <laughs> yeah, of course. And uh, I want to say a huge congrats for what you have accomplished in YouTube because, as I mentioned at the beginning of this podcast, this is something that a lot of people might say it's easy, you know, but if you never actually did it, <laughs> you can understand what it means to drop video after video after video, have different ideas, and evolving after you know month after month and this is something that i need to give you a huge congrats mm -hmm. and applause for what Agreed. you did peter yeah thank you so incredibly much Agreed. and uh yeah. thank you so much for having me and uh also like i'm i'm just as impressed by you uh, by your uh ability to post videos as well because as i said previously i haven't been following you emilio um but Chris, I've been watching you for a long time and uh, been watching your videos before I started doing YouTube videos. So I think that everything kind of comes full circle at some point. And uh, I think that it's also like a very good thing for people to keep in mind that it doesn't matter if you do it for like 10 years or one mm. year, as long as you have fun doing what you do, then mm. that, that's, that's like the, the winning concept. Yeah, definitely. What a great closing yeah. statement. Okay? What a great closing <laughs> statement. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Peter. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Have and, a wonderful uh, I will day. Get to shooting. You guys too. I uh so grateful that I No worries. Joined Thank in you here. so much, and Peter. Sorry about really being appreciate late. you. <laughs> no problem no at all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. All right. Take care. Bye.